Welcome back to Pine Pint Podcast, and today we've been joined by Ollie Banks. So let's get straight on into what Ollie has to say. Thank you very much, anyway, Ollie, for coming on the podcast. It's massively appreciated. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you, lad? Yeah, all good. All good. All good. All good. Uh, if it's all right, then we'll crack straight on. So, if you can yeah, go for it. start talking us through sort of how you become a professional footballer and and sort of that moment signing for for Rotherham. Um, well, um, it, it, it's it started off obviously from from a young age. It was something that I always wanted to do. Always wanted to be. Um, my dad were a good footballer. Um, <laughs> It's been it's been a bit of a nightmare having a, a a dad who's who's been a good footballer to be honest because you're always compared and always trying to live up to that. But um, no, it was a good it was a good player. So it's it's something that I it would just naturally happen for me. Um, it, we had a few uh, dodgy Sunday dinners where I'd not had a good game and. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be arguments across the table, but no, it it, it were uh, it was nice growing up with the with with someone like someone like my dad who who, who played at a, a very high level for a long time. Um, advice, I, I grew up around it. Um, it, it managed as well. Um, so seeing that growing up, obviously, I, I, I think helped. Um, and then I played Sunday League football up until probably what age would it have been? I'd probably say eight or nine. Hmm. I might be wrong. My mum, my mum might tell you different, but I think that's <laughs> about right. Um, and then I signed for Barnsley. Um, and then me, my dad became the assistant manager at Chesterfield. <clears throat> so then we moved over there, and it obviously coming. Coming back to Barnsley three nights a week, I think it were, then would be coming a bit of a nightmare for my mum and dad. So I went and played for Chesterfield. Mm. Um, I had had a few years there um, and my family moved back over this way. So then I'd, I'd, I just came back and played Sunday League football again. Um, to be honest, I'd, I'd stopped enjoying it as much um, in that like academy setup or centre of excellence, whatever it whatever it was called yeah. back then. Um, I, did, I weren't enjoying it like I like I used to, so I decided to go and play Sunday league football again and, and and enjoy it again. Yeah, and that would have probably at that point in my uh, life growing up, that was probably the best thing that I could have done. Yeah, it made me it made me want to play again. And then I, I was playing five aside with, with my dad and a few of his friends. Um, and there were a, a Rotherham coach there who were playing. And he said, why don't you come and, and train? I think I was about 14 at the time. Right. Um, and I ended up signing about, I think it was about three nights later. <laughs> <laughs> so they obviously, I think they liked what they saw. Um, so then I signed straight away. Uh, I think then I had probably a, a, I played the under fourteen season, under fifteens, and I think just just before my sixteenth birthday, I played for the reserves against Leeds. Mm. Um, after being involved with the youth team, obviously a couple of years above myself, um, with the likes of that night, I had that David Prutton playing. Um, is it Shawumni, the striker? They had yeah. Bill Kenny, the midfielder, playing. So that were it were that were a massive, massive thing for me. Been I might have just been 16, 15, 16, getting getting thrown into that. But that that were a brilliant night for me at that age against yeah. them. Them brilliant players. It was funny actually because David Prutton in about <laughs> after about three minutes of the game and two footed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I thought to myself, oh no, it's going to be a long night, this. <laughs> did you give him some really. gin back or something? No, I, 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 were, I were a quiet lad then. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he, he, he loved that referee that time, didn't he? Yeah, what, one, sorry? One prot in the, the bloke who threw the referee or something. A bit he, like, yeah, 
He got sent off for Southampton, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he a bit of a fellow, were not he? Went mad, he were off at Lions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he were, he were, he were an angry guy. And I was like, that's not, <laughs> not anymore. He's all placid and Sky Sports main yeah. man, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. people put hacks on them. <laughs> <laughs> he has to be for camera. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but then, after that, I... Um, I just carried on playing in the reserves. Play, obviously, uh, I did my first year scholar, um, and then I, I think it was my second year. No, end of it was the end of my first year scholar. I came on against Torquay for my debut mm. and scored. Yeah, pretty much. I think it was like my second touch of the game. <laughs> um, I, came, I actually came on for my cousin, Nicky Law. Oh, right. We were both in the same, both in the same team. And he, um, I came on for him and scored. I think we won 3-1. And then after that, I got offered professional. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a bit of a, a, a weird time at Rotherham at that time. Um, I think we had four managers in, in two years, might have been. We had we had Mark Robbins at the time where I was playing in the reserves and and he really liked me. Um, Ronnie uh, Andy Scott gave me my debut. Um, Robbins obviously left. Uh, Andy Scott left, and then you're always trying to impress a new manager. And obviously, yeah. everyone knows what football's like. It, some people like you, some people don't, and that's that's just the way it is. And I don't think who was the man. It was Steve Evans who. who uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your reaction says it all. Oh, yeah. um, I'll not go into that one though. <laughs> but he um, he came in and didn't. Not saying he didn't like me because it, it didn't really give me a chance to 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 make an impression. To be honest, he, he came in. Um, about I think it was two or three weeks before the end of the season, and he played me at right back in a reserve game, and he said to me, "I'm going to judge you off that performance." So I thought, no oh, pressure. No. <laughs> <laughs> but now he, he he just said, "Well, I, I was hoping you were going to be a good right back." I said, oh, "I didn't do it too well in that game." Then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever played right back before? Ollie? No, no, that would be f- oh, God. first. So where did he come about and just think, oh, this midfielder, I'm just going to stick him at right back? Just... <laughs> I'm guessing, but at the time, I think we had quite a lot of midfielders. Um, I was quite, I was, well, I've always been quite a tall lad. I would, I think he was just hoping that I was going to be a decent right back, but I don't know how you can judge anyone off, well, off one game. If you but... don't know, especially, chuck him in and... <laughs> and given one chance seems seems a bit strange. Do you think that's because am I right in saying you only made one that one goal scoring appearance for, yeah, yeah. for Rotherham in league? Yeah. Um Great record, eh? <laughs> yeah, not not bad. <laughs> um and then and then yeah, you moved on. Was it uh, FC United after after that? Did you go from Rotherham? Oh no, well, Gainsborough. Y- yeah. I th- when I first left Rotherham. You, you're testing my memory, here, lads. <laughs> <laughs> I've had more clubs than Tiger Woods. <laughs> no, I went to. I think it was yeah. I think it was Gainsborough. Let me have a look at your Wikipedia. Yeah, get it up. Yeah. I've, I've got it up. I've got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got it up. Yeah, look. Look. Yeah. Tell Ollie where he played. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> you played for Sheffield first. I'm assuming that's Sheffield White. No, that was FC. a youth loan. That was a youth loan. Oh, and then Bu- Buxton. That was a loan. That was all in the in the Rotherham before the Steve Evans, the change of managers. Yeah, yeah. That was that. That was that period. Stel- Staley, Staley Bridge, Staley Bridge, Celtic. Staley Bridge, yeah. Um, Gainsborough. What? So when I left Rotherham, I my, my dad knew Gary Mills quite well. You know the manager Gary Mills. He was at York at the time, so he gave him a ring and he said, "My lad's just been released from from Rotherham. Have a look at him." So he said, 
Yeah, all right. So I went I went in training. Uh, I did a couple of days training and he said, I, I like him. Mm. So he said, I want to see him in a couple of games. So I want I played to see him right back. <laughs> yeah, not right back, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, played, um, I played two games for York. Um, pre-season games they were. And honestly, I, I probably had the best two games I've ever had in my life. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd nailed on getting signed. And he, he pulled me on after the second game and he just said, Look, he said, I think you've done really well. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna sign this experienced lad who you know, obviously I were eight I were eighteen, nineteen at the time. He said, It's a bit of a chance, the chairman's not really keen on it. Um I'm gonna sign this experienced lad who's just gonna go straight into the team. So yeah, it, it was a bit of a it it, it wasn't great, it, a bit of a shit, but yeah, what what you can't be, at least it was honest. Yeah, I suppose at that level, that's that's what they're juggling. They can't yeah can't choose two players, can they? They're working on sort of shoestring budgets. So yeah, so I um, got it. I understood that you, you you don't mind as long as people are upfront and honest. You just have to get on with it. Mm. Uh, and then that's when I went to Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was on a, a pay-as-you-play contract there, and at the time they were they were paying some decent money out for the level, very decent money. Um, mm. Players were on contracts as well, which w- weren't really a a thing. What will it have been now? Eight, you know, nine years ago, will it have been? Eight years, yeah, 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 yeah. Years. yeah. yeah. That weren't really a thing in uh, at that level at that time. Um, so and it, the same again. I did really well in the games, and I, I just couldn't seem to get a a club where I fitted in, and and I I got a run of games. Mm. So then I went to um, I went to North Ferriby after not really playing that much at Gainsborough, mm. and under Billy is it Billy Heath? Yeah, Billy Heath was the manager. Um, I think I scored about five goals in seven games from right wing. I never really played right wing that much. <laughs> and and the, he rang me one Saturday morning and just dropped me out of the squad. So <laughs> I'm thinking I can't catch a break here. <laughs> Any reason given? Or? He, he just said, I'm going to go with my lads who they were under contract again and mm-hmm. Aaron Page play again. And it <laughs> It What's just that like nothing. that that sort of experience then? Because that you've had that that's I mean it's crazy really when you think going back to Rotherham, young kid. If you know as a football fan, if a young a youth team player comes on scores in his debut, you're like fucking, that's great, you know. And well, then, what was there any you know have the fans ever asked like why has this guy never played for us again? Yeah, at, the yeah. Time? To be then, at that time, yeah. there weren't there weren't really as much of a social media influence as what there is now. So yeah, back then I didn't really, I, I never had Twitter or I weren't really. So I I, I couldn't tell you. Um, Must be odd. But it, it was funny because when I was when I was seventeen and and I, I was doing well at Rotherham, I was training with the first team in and around it quite a lot. Leicester actually tried to to buy me from Rotherham. Mm. When it was Nigel Pearson, yeah, um, I went. I went and met. I went and met all the players. They were playing Doncaster on a Tuesday night. Uh, they were top at Championship at the time, uh, and I went and met all the players. Nigel Pearson obviously introduced me to all the lads. Mm. So I thought this is it. I, I, they'd made a, an offer to Rotherham. I think the turn. And the, I don't know the exact figures, but mm. the, Rotherham apparently were asking for stupid money. Um. And obviously, a seventeen-year-old lad, top of the team, top at championship, wanting to buy it. After I've never even played a game for Rotherham at this point. Yeah, it were it were it were crazy, and Rotherham were asking for daft money, which Leicester didn't want to pay. Yeah, um, and Rotherham used the excuse that they not have it, not had anyone through the youth setup for like. <laughs> Seven or eight years, I think it were six years. 
oh, we need to show to chairman that he's not wasting his money year in, year out. So that that, that were a bit of a, a stinker. And then to make my debut and score mm. and then get released not long after, it's it just a bit of a... Yeah, that must have been a right roller coaster. Like you say, if they're saying that, that must have made you think, right, well, at least I'm... I yeah. might not get that move, but at least I'm I'm going to get a chance. They want to stick with me. They want to show fans or, or chairman that, <laughs> that they're investing well, in youth. Come on and score a perfect debut. Well, See, this, yeah. this this is it, yeah. I was thinking, well, if if you're not going to let me go, then at least give me a decent contract yeah. or yes. something. But they didn't. And I ended up just being another one of them first-year pros who ends up getting thrown out at system to go and play non-league. And it, don't get me wrong, I'm not naive enough to think it's not just me it's happened to. There'll be hundreds of lads yeah. that it's happened to. Yeah. yeah. But it's um, it's it's poor, really, what they did. Um, because I, I, I could have been at a, a bigger club and I would have obviously progressed as a player a lot more than what I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, that is. But, uh, so moving on to when you were at FC United, no. you was... A, yeah, you was become well. You was a part time kitchen fitter at the same time. What was it like juggling football and work at the same time? Um, it it was it was tough to be fair. Um, I left North Ferriby after that after, after not getting in the squad. I um, I went to FC United and absolutely loved it. Yeah, just fitted in straight away. They it seemed to just fit. Every, every, it, it, it just did um, and then obviously it come to a point like you say trying to work trying to trying to play football and I, I just thought to myself one day well it actually my mum and dad sat me down and said look if you need financial help whatever help you need just focus on football now mm. just if it's if it's another if it's a year of your life, you have to really really focus on it because this could be your last chance. Yeah, and obviously my dad being involved in football for a long time. Once you get past that certain age, it's hard to then break through. Yeah, um, but that's what I did. I ended up I ended up s- stopping uh, fitting kitchens. Because um, what it was when I when I came out of football at, at, at Rotherham, I, I went and did a le- um, electric qualification. Because um, obviously I knew that at, well, at the time I thought that well football is not going to be my life, what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, so I had to get something else behind me, which I did. And then as I was doing that, um, a local bloke. Um, you know, my sister knew needed somebody to help him out and I they only live around the corner from him so it just made sense it got me some extra money and I could play football as well but it got to a point where we're getting too much I even I dropped a, <laughs> I dropped a big massive cabinet on my toe the night before <laughs> oh, no. the night, uh, sorry the, the same day as, as I had a game and broke my big toe <laughs> so did I you played, still play? Yeah, I played, yeah. I, <laughs> I think I had about six paracetamol and... <laughs> all, all Drugged up on pitch. Oh, <laughs> just to get through it. And um, it's funny, actually, because that, 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 that was one of the games that Chesterfield came to watch me in and decided that they wanted to sign me. <laughs> so, just got to break your toe every time you play yeah. Chesterfield. <laughs> yeah. um, we had Charlie Raglan on um, last week. He were at FC United as well, and he was just, well, he was saying he, he sort of saw that as closest he he would come to to playing for Man United because they've obviously they sing all songs yeah. and that. So he used to go on and do his best Nemanja Vidić impression, and, and that, right? I'm at Old Trafford. I'm, I've got my red shirt. I'm playing. Oh, he's a great lad, Rags. Great lad. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he were he were he were great on him. When we were on, did did you have that same sort of interaction then with the fans? Like, it's unreal and unprecedented for that level, isn't it? To get to get those crowds and, and well, to get that's, that level of support. That's the thing with them. It it, it was strange that obviously a, a, a non-league club. They weren't even they weren't even a conference non-league club. It were no. Was it Evo Stick Prem when I first yeah. went? There? And yeah. you were playing in front of 
three and a half, four thousand people some weeks, and it would. Yeah. And I and I like I like that. The, I like playing in front of. It, it brings the best out of me, in my opinion. Yeah. And it just it just fitted the fans like me, and the ma- the manager like me, and it just it just worked. I think I only ended up playing about. 18 games for them. Mm. Um, we got to the playoff final and lost to Hednesford. Yeah. Um, and then I think I played about the first, what would it have been, three or four games of that new season. And then I signed for Chesterfield. Mm. Yeah, so moving on to Chesterfield then, you were part of a very successful Chesterfield team. What was it like playing with that squad? Well, when I, like I've just said then, I, I played my first game of that season at Worksop and I played my last game of that season at Wembley. So it, was a, <laughs> it was a crazy, crazy season. Um, but going into that, going into that dressing room first day, I think they'd won like the first seven games of the season or something. I was thinking I'm dropped right on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, your looks, your looks yeah, turned after yeah, being yeah. dropped and so on. So uh, yeah. moving on, yeah, class. But I, um, Paul Cook got me in his office the first, the first day when I went to sign. He went, "Well, how much money do you want?" <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> oh, "Thank you." Okay. <laughs> I said, uh, "I said, in fact, I'll just tell you, shall I?" He went, <laughs> he said. Well, we can't afford to give you much because you've signed late and all that and you've come from non-league and I said, all right, fair enough. He said, how much were you earning? I said, right, I were on £200 a week or a game at FC United, which would be some money back then for them. (laughs) And um, I think I were on the same, I were about 250 quid a week fitting kitchens. So I said 450 quid a week. And he went, all right, we'll give you that then. I didn't really have much choice in matter. <laughs> it was like take it or leave it kind of thing. And yeah. obviously I won't. I won't. <laughs> it. It down. Do you wish you'd said now, looking back at that, 600? Get an extra couple hundred? <laughs> well, no, not really. Because I, I got a £200 rise every 10 games I played. And I think I ended up playing about 40 games that season. <laughs> <laughs> No, see, but no, nah, I um, I got, I, I was never expecting to get into that team, probably, uh, at, at all that season, to be honest. Yeah. He, he pretty much said that to me, the gaffer, Cookie. He said, just train, see where you are, and 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 work your balls off and and try your best. So I thought, all right, that's what I'll do. Mm. And obviously, me at that point, I was enthusiastic. I thought I've got me, I've got my second chance. Yeah. Um. So I, I just I grabbed the balls by the uh, ball by the horns and gave it my best shot. And I must have done something right because I think it only took me about three or four weeks to get in team. Yeah. And I think I scored five goals in my first three games, four games or something, six. <laughs> End up getting young player of the month in the first month, and it um yeah it it were it were nice because finally me me look had me look had changed. Yeah. What was it like then playing at Wembley? <laughs> well, I only managed to get twelve minutes, and I broke my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Then. Ten minutes were all right. <laughs> What was the atmosphere like, though? Like, walk, well, being on the pitch and the crowd and noise. I think I'm um, Chesterfield take Josh. Did you... Um, quite. A few, I didn't go that time. They they got too used to going to Wembley, didn't they? They'd only been like <laughs> two years before. Well, I'm not, I can't. I can't afford I think, to go again. I think they were about <laughs> 40, forty odd. Yeah, yeah it was good good turnout. Turnout. Yeah, it was. Hey, it's not good. just it's not just the day though, is it? When when there's a Wembley appear, it's the yeah. whole thing. It's and especially for me, coming from what I'd come from, yeah, it it was a big thing for my family and and obviously my missus and everything. It, it, it was just a, my friends. Everybody went. I think I had to buy about thirty tickets. <laughs> but it, um, now it was the whole occasion. It, it was it was brilliant. Loved it. Yeah. Um, 
Loved it. I loved my whole time at Chesterfield. Brilliant club. Loved it. What, what, what was the difference club, so like for you, Ollie, with that squad that you came into there? Obviously, it was such a, I'm assuming, a step up from what you've been playing with, playing with players like Morsi and Cooper and all these, uh, Derek were, I could go on and on. What, what was that like? Did you feel, Jesus Christ, this is a step up, like, in, even in training, were you, did that bring more out of you than what, what you knew you had, maybe? Well, I, it was, it's, a, it's a funny one for me because when, I'll go back to when Nigel Pearson, when, I, when, when he tried to sign me at Leicester, he, he said to me, he said, I think you'll either play at a decent level or I don't think you'll play at all. And I was like, and he said, no, it's a compliment. He said, I think you're a, you're a, you're a technically good footballer. I just don't know. And he, he, he was probably right a little bit in what he was saying. I mean, I've tried to improve on, on, the, on the defensive, the shitty side of the game. Yeah. But that, that's not, that don't come naturally to me. No. And, but that, as soon as I went into Chesterfield, I felt at home. I felt yeah. like, this is where this is how I should be playing. Yeah, and obviously it helps when the team's winning and everyone around you's, everyone's happy and training's good and everyone's having a laugh. It, it just, it was it were easy to step into. Yeah. Um, like Gary Robert, well, we had Ian Everett, Coops at centre half, Jimmy Ryan and, and Morsey. Played in front of them too. Gary Roberts on one side, Jay O'Shea on the other, and uh, Rico up front and Owen Doyle, one or the other. But it's, it's got to be one of the best League Two teams that there's been. It's got to be every every time I uh, every time you meet someone new in a new team, or they always say you had some team back then, mm. like they weren't the best teams we've ever, and it were. Yeah. It worked easily, easily. It's it's the best best League Two team I've played in by a country mile. Yeah, yeah, and you got promoted that that season. Went up in League Two and and very nearly made it straight up to to Championship. Yeah. What what were the? We've spoke to a few. With Charlie, were part of that team. Tommy Lee, we've spoke to, um, and I think both sort of said. They didn't really sort of think at the time about how big that was for, for a club of Chesterfield size. It's only looking back now where they are and, and realising how, how special it was. Like you say, it was a very special team. How did they bounce back from... So it's, that's when it went wrong for the, for the club, really, isn't it? Yeah. That, that was the peak, hitting that, that playoff. And then, obviously, Paul Cook went and they've, they've not stopped free-falling since, really, unfortunately. Well, you can you can... You can end up doing too well for your own good, can't you? And you lose. Obviously, we, we lost Cookie, and he, he was obviously a brilliant manager. He got the best out of people. Um, I'd probably say him and Mickey Mellon probably brought the best out in me. Mm. Under Cookie, I was the fittest that I've probably ever been. Yeah. Um, he trained very hard. Um, he, he had it was funny with Cookie because he had a way of it could be about six different people <laughs> and still be him but I don't know it was it, it's weird because he'd, he'd, he'd always know how to get the best out of you All the, you had a, a whole different set of players and he knew how to poke at all the different ones to get the best reaction out of everyone and it, I remember going in his office because I'd not played for about eight or nine games. And he uh, I said, Gaffer, I said, what? I said, I'm not here. I'm not asking why I'm not playing. I said, I want to know what I've got to do to get back in the team. Mm. So I thought that might be the best way to play. I don't want to go and ask why I'm not playing. <laughs> and uh, he went, that's it. He went, you're in. I went, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I thought we thought it was taking a piss. He said, I just wanted you to show some bollocks and come in and <laughs> I went, oh, right. And I played about the next fifteen games after that. Really? Yeah, just, wow. 
Next, next time you were dropped to is that in, in office going, why the fuck am I not playing? <laughs> I always tell that story to people. Nobody can ever believe it. And I, I couldn't believe it at the time, but he, you, you go in his office with a problem, not even football related. It could be anything. Yeah. Because um, obviously he, he, he was the type of manager you could go to and you could speak to. Um, and there's, there isn't, there's not loads like that, to be honest. Um, and you'd, you'd, you'd go out feeling feeling the best you've ever felt. And he had a, a good way of, of working things. And I think that's why he's been so successful. Yeah, we've not had anyone come on and, and say a bad word about him who, who's played under him. Um, oh, he could be a he... lunatic as well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie Raglan said that. Because he don't look it, does he? He just comes, with, like I said on when we spoke to, to Charlie, he yeah. just looks like such a nice guy. And I was like, has he got a bollocking in him? I just couldn't picture it at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah. You, the, the thing is with managers, you've, you've got to have that little bit of a fear factor for them. Yeah. You, I think you've got to. It's And, and he certainly had that. You, you, you knew if, you, if you'd not done it first half or you'd not, you were thinking, I'm going to get fucking hell. I'm getting it here at time. <laughs> and you do, you need that. Um, yeah. But I, 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 you'll not catch me saying anything bad about him. He, he gave me my second chance. Um, no, I, I, I owe a lot to uh, to what he did for me. To be fair, yeah, I want I want to see him back at a, back in football at a, at a big club with with a lot of money to spend. I think he. I think the good the good thing also about him, he, he knew he knew if we had a win, a good win. You'd be like, right, lads, get yourself a few beers, have a good night tonight. Yeah. Or like if we had we had a few international breaks in that league one season. Um it's say, right, we'll train hard today, then we'll all meet in pub at two o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> and it gets Sounds. up at six o'clock, you're like, right, lads, see you in a bit now. Yeah. Nobody get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody uh, just keep your heads down, have a good night. Seen a couple of days, he, he, but when it was time to work, it was time to work. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you need that though, don't you? you? Need your downtime. Yeah, of course, yeah. And you need that trust as well. I think that's probably a big thing, isn't it? Having that trust that he's saying, like, he trusts us to go and get pissed up and know that we won't get arrested. Like, that's for, for me. For the me, Derby way. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, in 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 football, the the relationship between a manager and a player is all about trust. If you haven't got that, then yeah. What are you? Yeah. yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you, Ollie, actually, is a lot of players have different superstitions either going on to the pitch or pre-match routines. Do you have any, or is it is yours just like now? Nah, just get straight on pitch or what? Walking Don't on with I, a left foot. No, I, I stay dressed until it's five minutes before to go out. I, I don't do any messing about or no strappings or. I have my tracksuit on until it's five minutes before I have to go out. Um, yeah. I've got a pair of shin pads with my wife and kids on. That's as as much as it goes for me. Occasionally break a toe on a match day. If you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just a one off that way. <laughs> Put the steel boots on, toe cap boots, and whenever I'm moving up. <laughs> and uh, another one actually is we've we've said this to I think Steve Garning is the best one, but. In terms of initiations of people joining new teams, what's the best one that you've seen? Oh, there's been some bad ones. <laughs> Who's been the worst? You can give us that. In fact, I've, I've got a couple of good ones, but the worst one, and but it was the worst best one as well. Romy Bocco. <laughs> Bocco, what is it? Romy Bocco? Romy Bocco, yeah, I remember him. Oh my God. He, he did this. What song was it now? In his in his in his in his accent, it was the weirdest three minutes of, of my life. I can't even. I don't even know what it were. I can't even tell you what it were, but it was strange. But it, it was funny. Um, Craig Davis did twenty one seconds. So solid crew, every single word. <laughs> so that's, yeah. That was that was brilliant. It was probably one of the best I've ever seen. Well, that's it. Get, get older, Craig Davis, Nick. I know, yeah. 
I mean, that would be something special, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, uh, Craig Davis, can you start singing uh, <laughs> so Solid Crew? <laughs> yeah, that, that were the olden days, that. That were the olden days. That, that, less said about that, the better, I think. <laughs> What's your go-to song, then, for, Ollie, for uh, when you're doing yours? I haven't got a go <laughs> I haven't got a go-to one. It's just one that I know the words to at that point. <laughs> just, that. just blag it through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's not the best light, but it's horrible because the whole way through, you think you're not enjoying your food at the meal. <laughs> you're just waiting for that tap on the glass. And you're thinking, oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's all right when there's... I, when, I, when I first signed for Oldham, there were, I think there were only three players under contract at that time and obviously there were about 18 of us that signed <laughs> so the first the first away trip there was eight, about 18 19 of us that all had to see. <laughs> that was we, a long we, night we were in there about, about 11 o'clock <laughs> doing it together like a choir yeah <laughs> but that, that makes it a bit easier when there's a few of you it's yeah. not you that's making a titty yourself <laughs> No, oh, brilliant. So we're going to sort of skip ahead a little bit now to your time with Tramia and where you was promoted in the playoff final. What was that like playing in their playoff final? I the, I went there on loan the season before um, in the National League. I, I did two months on loan from Oldham um, and did well. I think we won pretty much every game at the mm. time over there. And they ended up getting promoted. And I'd, I'd always been back in touch with, with the gaffer, Mickey Mellon, about re-signing if, if they got promoted. And uh, I actually went to the playoff final. Obviously, a couple of the lads that I'd got close to were playing, so I went down. And I think I ended up sorting a deal out about a, a week after that playoff final. Um I love my time there uh, on loan, so I thought oh, this, it's a long way from home, but if I'm going to enjoy it, then it, the car journey doesn't matter, really. Yeah. It's, all, it's all about enjoying football again. I know you skipped past that, but I had two years at Oldham that were, that, that were hell, to be honest. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to enjoy it again. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I did there, so that it, it were a no-brainer to sign. And then obviously we had a we had a fantastic season. Nobody expected us to to do what we did, mm. um, and to get promoted at Wembley was just. <laughs> to be honest, we when we look back, we we still speak about it now a few of the lads that were still there at that time. There's not many of us left to be honest, and I think we only needed to win two of the last seven games to get promoted. And we did, we won one. Or, or, I don't even know if we won one. <laughs> Every, everyone absolutely bottled it. <laughs> Was that just complacency then, or something? Because I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. I just think this is in the bag. We can't not fail. Type thing. No, because we were outsiders. We were. We we were always in that like last second last playoff spot. Yeah. The rules: Forest Green, Newport, and Mansfield. Obviously, Mansfield had been top two or three all season they've been flying um, and we we'd always been hovering between mid table and playoffs and everyone else just started crumbling so we were thinking right win today we get up there win and we just couldn't win <laughs> just couldn't win and uh, I think it were Forest Green I think they had to beat someone to get automatics as well and they crumbled and we had another opportunity but it, it looked like it, it just nobody wanted to to get into that last automatic promotion spot. But it, if you're going to get promoted, playoffs and Wembley is definitely the best way to do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, not for it's, fans. I'll tell you that now. It's not for no, fans. Oh, it is. No, it's, not, it's not for the players. It isn't for the players. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't recall a single minute of that game. <laughs> Really? No. Even, as, even as fans, we can't. Like, no. Uh, I'm a Burnley fan. We went up against Sheffield United in 2009. I only remember the goal. I remember fucking nothing else. No. 
crying at the final whistle. Yeah, same. same. Yeah. It's it, it, it's that much of a it's that much of a, an emotional roller coaster. You, all your your you just energies obviously focused on that. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't tell you I couldn't yeah. tell you anything that happened really apart from the goal in the last minute. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can't remember anything for about three days after that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> no, it, the, the team we had that season and the the dressing room and the, it were easily the most enjoyable year in football, mm. hands down by a by a mile. Yeah, but I, dri- I used to, <laughs> used to drive two hours there and two hours back, and it didn't bother me. Yeah, that's like, a problem. That's a everyone used to say, "Does that not bother you driving all that way?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> I used to love going out to train, and lo- it, it would just. Uh, I, I don't think for any football them them seasons really happen that often. Yeah, where you, where you do enjoy it like that, and it, it would. I feel lucky to have had that season. To be honest, We're good. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to. Touch on last season with Tranmere, where there was obviously relegated in peculiar circumstances. So Tranmere were three points off and a game in hand before the season were finished early. What was sort of your thoughts and the players' thoughts on how it really come to an end? Well, obviously it it was. I don't know how you can relegate or, or promote somebody on what if. Yeah, I don't, that don't it don't really it don't sit right with me. That's I think it's I think it's bonkers that you can that you can do that. It's it's people's people's livelihoods at the end of the day. You just it's not just players. It's the whole. It's mm-hmm. the clubs obviously been hit hard enough through all this fans as well. It's it, it's just a I think it. I don't know if it were an easy way out for him or I, I don't know what it were, but it, I, I, I don't understand it. It, it were, it's shocking. It's shocking, but there's nothing, there's obviously, obviously nothing we could have done about it. Um, and we were doing well at the time. I'd just, I'd obviously missed a lot of that season through injury. I, I did a, I got a bad injury. I think it was about oh, the end of October, something like that. Um, but we just started to pick up. To be fair, before before lockdown came, uh, the team were playing well, and we had players coming out, <clears throat> we had players coming back from injury. We were, we were starting to get a fully fit squad, and I've got no doubt we would have stayed up. But it, it's it, like I say, it's poor to 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 relegate somebody on a what if. Yeah, shocking, really. Especially when they only applied that to League One and Two. I mean, what's that about, you know? Well, for me, it just goes to show the gulf, the difference between yeah. that that top end and League One and Two. It, it just magnifies it all the more for me. It, it, it is bizarre because I, I don't know. I don't know the reason that, that they did it, if, if they've ever provided one. But assuming it were to do with sort of paying for testing or something, like I'm sure you, your chairman would rather pay for a weekly test for every player than, than the cost of, of getting relegated. I mean, if you get relegated after 46 games, you, you get relegated. You take it on. Yeah. To you, you, you deserve it. At the end of every season, wherever you finish is where you deserve to be. Yeah. That's, that end that's, <laughs> that's what it is. But we... Yeah, it is... Like I say, it's, it's, it's poor, really. But we... the. Every club had a vote. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to get your your likes of. There's us that had a chance of staying up. Yeah. There were Wimbledon just above us, mm-hmm. who were happy to do that because they were going to stay up, which yeah. obviously you can't blame them for. Yeah. And then you've got the the top two who were uh, obviously vote to end season, and then you've got the lads who can still get promoted or can still get in playoffs voting to keep it. So you were never opening a vote up. You're not going to get someone in mid-table saying, oh, yeah, we'll play 300 grand to test players. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
it, it was it's it was ludicrous that they opened the vote up because you were you were going to get our chairman and probably three other chairmen that all wanted to carry its season on and everybody else. So you're massively out outnumbered. Yeah, just that. the minute they made it a vote, it was a foregone conclusion, really, wasn't it? Yeah, the vote was a waste of time. Mm. A complete waste of time. Yeah, but like you say, that well, I think it was Luke that said that that gave them the way out. That's what the clubs want. So, of course, yeah. End of the day, all uh, this world we're living, it all boils down to money, doesn't it? And yeah. that's what that's the last conversation about it. What, what's it going to cost, and is it going to benefit anyone? That, yeah, that's that's what it boils down to, isn't it? No matter what who it costs and what it costs. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you guys were the the, the sort of biggest. Oh yeah, we we took <laughs> because they, they even opened playoffs again, didn't they? So yeah. teams in those spots got got that shot at, at getting to Wembley. And getting to Wembley. <clears throat> well, this is what we said as a bunch of players. Well, they got the chance to fight for a promotion. Why why didn't we get the chance to to fight to stay in league? Yeah, we should have done like a playoff for relegation. Yeah. In a way, shouldn't they? That that was that was the only fairest way of doing it. Should have done that. Least, done like a, a six team, a six team playoff relegation or something like that. Well, yeah. what were the, what were the left ten games? They should have they should have worked it out. Who can still go up and who can still go down? You'll you'll play. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they could have done something. There was certainly plenty of time when where no one could do anything <laughs> to to get the Reds together and and sort out a fair. A fair way, but they, yeah, just another yeah, reason yeah. to hate coronavirus, isn't it? Really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As if we need it anymore. <laughs> no. but, but moving on to this season, you've you started all right, mid-table, few few points off a of, off at of playoffs. Yeah, we we started very hit and miss. Obviously, Jacko, the assistant, took over. Um. From 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 Mickey, um, and it, it obviously didn't go to plan. He, he lost his job, unfortunately. We didn't quite get the results that we we should be getting for the, the quality of squad that we've got. But uh, recently, we've we've obviously done been doing well. Um, not been playing as much as I want to do, but what can you say when when the team's winning? You just got to. Uh, Keep cheerleading. <laughs> <laughs> and um, FA Cup draw tonight. You've got Barnsley away. Not not quite Old Trafford that I'm sure you always look for in, in third round. But well, I, I live about a mile and a half from Barnsley's ground, so it's a perfect draw for me. <laughs> 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 it's funny because me, me and my missus was, was sat down early and she said, could do with Barnsley away. And then I looked at my phone and it said, Barnsley away. I was like, that's mad, that. <laughs> But um, now that's all right for me, that. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> yeah, no. It's a walk into town and you've got a game. <laughs> yeah, obviously it's not It's not what you want, is it? It's not Liverpool or City or United, but, but it gives us a, an all right chance of getting through. Yeah. yeah. They've got a, quite a rich history, haven't they, in, in cup runs as well, Tramia. I can remember late 90s, early 2000s, they had a couple of proper cup runs. Quite yeah, we've, cup we've done all right last few seasons as well. We've, I think we've, we've got to the third round at least for the last three years. Um, it's still excitement, aren't it? Third round. Third yeah, round. it's. Yeah, it always will have for me. Yeah. Um, it's it's not so much the younger lads in the squad; they don't quite get the. You know the the younger lads coming through now; they don't quite get the the, the magic around it. But I still remember watching it when I was young, and it's. It's uh, still pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. Right, if it's all right, Ollie, we'll move on to uh, our Tommy Lee Pro 5 quiz, which uh, has got the name and rights because he got five out of five, but I'll let Josh take you through that. Yeah, <laughs> did. so Tommy was uh, was the first pro that we had on who, who got all five right. So, yeah, from, okay. from here on, it's the cat. Tommy Lee Pro 5 quiz. Um Right, so it's just five questions about your career. Um, about my own career? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't even remember who I played for, so this ain't going to go <laughs> I did think that. I did think that when you were struggling with you. 
to recall your clubs, but uh, here we go. I'm, I'm sure we've had a zero out of five, so you can't be you can't be the can't, worst. Can't be the worst. That's all right. Uh, so number one, you made 261 senior appearances in your career so far since your goal scoring debut with Rotherham in 2011. How many goals have you scored? Is it 29, 32, or 35? Ooh, 32. Correct. Can you name who they were against? (laughs) No, number two, um, I I like to chuck this one in because I I, I love a a shirt number. Like, I'm a Man United fan. I'm always looking out for, like, who's number seven. And I I do, I I love a shirt number, so. I love a shirt number. I I do. I'm a bit weird about it. (laughs) To me, yeah. you know, when I used to collect all the stickers, I you know, I always knew shirt numbers and it's never left me. So, you wore seven different shirt numbers in your league career. Can you yeah. name them all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you included the two at Rotherham? So, I wore two different numbers at Rotherham. So, I can give you them all. Oh, no, I've only got one from Rotherham. 28. host. Eight. 28 is the one that I've got at Rotherham and at Tranmere. Yeah, I wore 14 at Rotherham as well. Oh. I wore number two at Chesterfield. Yeah, we'll come back to to that. Yeah. (laughs) Was that when you were maybe going to be a right back again or something? (laughs) I was thinking Steve Evans might get thrown off scent if I walk out. Yeah. I wore wore two and 24 at Chesterfield. Yeah. I wore 29 at Swindon. Yeah. I wore... How many's left? Three. Three? Northampton, Oldham and Tranmere. Oldham I wore eight. Yeah. Northampton I wore... 29. 30. Oh, um, and is there one left? One left at Tranmere. I think this was in your loan spell. Ooh. I think that was that were high 20s, that I'm sure it were. No, it weren't. No, it weren't. <laughs> <laughs> the roller coaster. Same pure reaction. <laughs> 32. 32, correct. Um, yeah. So you you missed out on that that one. Um, number eight. I give you an extra rather than one. So. <laughs> an extra one. We'll verify that and then give you the point. <laughs> um, so why did you wear two at Chesterfield? I can remember um, at that time. Me, me shirt number OCD were kicking off. Yeah, Paul Cook didn't really like it either. To be honest, he said, he said I keep looking up pitch and seeing number two running the net, and I don't know what to think. <laughs> Now we, um, I went and seen the, after I signed, I went to see the, the kit man and he said, right, there's the numbers that I left. And they were like, what were they? I, I wanted 14 at the time. That would be the last rhythm, but they, they obviously retired it for Jack Lester, which I didn't know. Um, I wanted 13 as well, so I'm not superstitious or anything like that. Paul Cup won't let me have 13. He would yeah. against that. Um, and the only numbers that were left were like high 30s. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, I don't want to be an high 30. <laughs> I thought if I get a number in the starting 11, it might give me a chance to get in starting 11. That's what I thought. Yeah. So. Who it was. Oh, it was. on. Um, Number three, uh, which teammate have you shared the pitch with on the most occasions? Uh, it's a choice of three. There's Ian Everett, Jay O'Shea, or Tommy Lee. It's going to have to be Tommy Lee because he's he played most games. I'm sure. Yeah, it is Tommy Lee. He played 98 times with Tommy. Uh, 73 yeah. with Ian Everett. 78 with uh, Jay O'Shea. But yes, correct. Um, Number four, you received three red cards in your career against who? Chesterfield. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a bad tackle. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shocker. At the time as well, I thought, that's not that bad. And I watched it back and I thought, oh, Jesus. Not bad. Um, <laughs> it was on Lewis Reed and it was pissing me off that game. So I thought, I'm just going to have to do it. <laughs> I'm actually all right with him now as well. I'm all right with him. <laughs> um, who's uh, who the other ones be? <laughs> Three red cards. What else have been sent off against? Uh, these two were both for Tranmere. Oh yeah, uh, Bristol Rovers away. Yeah. Um, there's a funny story behind that. I'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, <laughs> what else have been sent off for Tranmere? Ah. Oh. I should know, really. Oh, Mansfield away. Mansfield, yeah, correct. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll let you get to your, your Bristol. Oh, yeah. So, second. Um, what, what I do like to ask, though, did you've already said you deserved the red card at Chesterfield, which was refreshing because very rarely we have a footballer say that they that they deserve to, to get some. Oh, yeah, yeah, it could have been probably three or four sending off in one. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other two? Were they deserved or...? Um, the Mansfield one, maybe. Um, the first booking, no. The second booking, yes. Yeah. I, I, I went, the first booking, it, that Mal Benning, the left back at Mansfield, just got a touch on the ball and he's gone over like he'd been shot and obviously I didn't really, I didn't hardly touch him, um, which got me the first booking. And then, obviously, you know what refs are like. I'll run a bit of a tight rope after that one. Yeah. Um, but the Bristol Rovers one, I was, my first booking, I was deep, I was deep in their half. I'd gone to get the ball off the full back and I think he'd shot past it. And Clark Harris has got the ball and he's knocked it past me and I'm not blessed with much pace. <laughs> and I'm chasing him for about 80 yards. Then our fullbacks come running past me, obviously, because I'm not best in much pace. <laughs> and he's chopped him from the side. And I'm walking away to go and defend the set piece, and the refs booked me to me back. <laughs> obviously, I've walked away thinking our fullback's going to get booked because he tackled him. I didn't touch him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's booked me without me knowing. So then, second half, we've just had a man sent off. And then. There, the left back's thrown it to the centre mid. He's popped it back to him, and I've gone to press the full back. And he's made a bit of a meal of it, to be fair. I didn't, probably, maybe a booking. And then the book, it, I've got a booking, and the rest took the red card out. And I've said, You've got that wrong, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I haven't even been booked. <laughs> he went, Yeah, you have. I said, When? Said I, I said, I'm, surely, I, I said, I've played, I've played football for a long time now. I know whether I've been booked or not. <laughs> so I'm fuming and everyone's like, nobody's knowing what's going off. So I've got in at half time. And then I'd seen that. I looked straight on the thing and I'd seen that being booked. <laughs> and obviously we've, we've, we've come in at full time and Mickey Mellon's absolutely gone for me. And I've started having to go back and obviously that's not the best idea. But I said, look, I said, on my kids' lives, I did not know I'd been booked. And he just wouldn't have it. He weren't having it. I said, I, I said, there might be a lot of things, but I'm not a liar. I said, I didn't know I'd been booked. And he still weren't having it. So then this was obviously a Tuesday night game. Thursday I went in. I went straight into his office, said, Gaffer, have you got a minute? He went, no, come in, come into my office. You can say, you can say what you've got to say in front of everyone. So there's, there's two analysts, fitness coaches, all the youth team coaches. Uh, well, there must be about nine people in there. I said, Gaff, come on, seriously. <laughs> he went, no, no, come in here. So he made me sit in front of all these people oh, no. and explain why. I said, look, I'm sticking to my original story. 
and he ended up um, he ended up finding me a week's wages. Oh. Forget it. it started off at two weeks, so I was buzzing with a week. <laughs> Watched it back. Have they watched it back and seen that you, you actually didn't get the book in or? Yeah. Well, this is it. I, I sat down, I said, right, Gaffer, I said, get it up on, I, I called the analyst over, I said, get it up, I said, I want to see it. And it, and it, to be fair, it clearly showed me getting booked to my back. Yeah. yeah, but for what? Was it like Descent or something or? No. It, it just got it wrong, it was wrong and, player. Yeah, because me and the full back were running side by side. Right. So it were like an optical illusion almost. Maybe, yeah. And um, he's booked the wrong person. But he said the he argued I think it we lost the game and another player got sent off, so everything obviously gets a bit more blown out of proportion. I think if we go and win game and nobody gets sent off and I just get sent off then it, it changes things a little bit. But you know what football's like, it's a Roller coaster of emotions, and I think he just wanted to uh, have a scapegoat. Yeah, and prove a point, really. But it it, it is what it is. Right? It, it was probably the second one was it definitely was a booking, but you didn't know you didn't do? probably wouldn't have made the tackle if you didn't know. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> no. <laughs> but never mind. Yeah. Okay. So, as always, with uh, question five on the Tommy Lee Pro Five quiz, you've played under thirteen managers in your career. Can you name five of them? And then five: Danny Wilson, Paul Cook, um, David Flitcroft, three, Mickey Mellon, Mike Jackson, Keith Hill, six. Um, I'm gonna keep. You only needed five. Dean Saunders, seven. Chris Wilder. Eight. Richie Wellens. Nine. John Sheridan. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to get them all now. I think if you get a full house, we might give you another point. <laughs> <laughs> believe them. I uh, think you've listed. Nine, I think. I? I think you've got three more. Three more? Oof, I'm not sure about that. I think so, yeah. Must be another one at Chesterfield. Uh, no, I think oh, no. Those are my Rotherham ones. Andy Scott. Yeah. Uh, Steve Evans. Yeah. Who was my first manager? Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Moore. There you go. 13. Effort. That's it. Nick says you can have that point. Uh, I don't know. It goes in total with your uh, your next part as well, your score prediction. So you've got to do well on there to uh, <laughs> to get to the top of the board. So what we've got before we leave, Ollie, if that's all right, we've got the score predictions of all of our teams. So I support Derby, Josh Sports Man United and Luke Burnley. So then next coming fixture for you to predict the score line and that will go in total with your Pro 5 quiz. Yeah. So... First game is Millwall versus Derby. Can you give me your score prediction for that one? At Millwall. At Millwall. 1-1. One, one. I'll take that. I'll take that. Take that. Derby would take that. <laughs> Derby would definitely take that. <laughs> uh, Burnley versus Everton. Um, I'm going to go... 2-1 Everton. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, and then the last one, West Ham versus Man United. 1-0 United. One nil. So he's currently on six points with your Pro 5 quiz. You need at least another four to be matching Tom Lee at the top. So best of luck. <laughs> best of luck but no thank you very much Ollie for coming on you've been an absolute pleasure mate yeah, so, thank you very much and best of luck for the rest of the season yeah. thanks guys yeah good luck to Tram yeah cheers, cheers guys thank you very much bye. cheers Ollie thanks all bye bye Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. How good was Ollie Banks and good luck to Tramia for the rest of the season. So let's get on with our week's weekend predictions. So 
We'll go over the last week. So we'll start with Millwall versus Derby. Luke, you had Millwall one nil. Josh, you had Millwall two nil. Yeah, um, the shit and the racist, and you won, and I'm glad. <laughs> Not wrong. I got five points for that. I predicted Derby to win one nil. I did say Rooney will stay with us. And I honestly think he'll get a perm job. I'm not even joking. Yeah, we've had, is it four games now permanently underneath, under him, and we've not lost a game. I think we've only conceded two goals. Fair enough, we've played Wickham, Coventry, Brentford, and Millwall. Some easier than others, but I mean, it's not done bad. So I think fans are turning around and sticking with him. So five points on that one. Luke, Burnley versus Everton, and you had Burnley 1 0. Yeah, I think we deserve to win. We had the better chances in the game. Um, just a bit of bit, bit of great centre forward play got him a goal. Really, Calvert Lewin, great player. But it, it was a typical Burnley performance, as in you know, really solid defensively. Hope made one outstanding save. Actually, I don't know if you've seen highlights of the game, but James Rodriguez cut him onto his left foot, bending it top corner. Fingertip round the post save. Absolutely stunning. Southgate was at the game. Pickford was also good though. Made a couple of one-on-one saves. So, um, Is he coming back into form now, Pickford? Because he were absolute shy for the first. <laughs> well, he, he were very good against us. He made a, a save from point-blank range from a corner from Chris Wood. Header. Um, and then he made an outstanding save as well after that. I can't remember who took the shot. Yeah. That have been Rodriguez. Um but yeah, we played really well. Um, I, I said a win because I thought I thought it'd be very tight. It'd be a one nil or a draw, uh, and I'd have taken a point really there. Um, they've been out of form, but they're still a decent team. I never turned down a point against Everton. Someone who didn't think it would tight with Josh having two nil Burnley. No, I thought well Everton have been really out of form, haven't they? I didn't think Burnley would be a, a team that suited him. Um, I thought I thought they'd win it, but yeah, decent point for for both really. Yeah. I got another five points. Thank you very much. I had one one. Oh, absolute sick of myself. <laughs> uh, West Ham versus Man United. Josh, we'll start with you, and you had three one Man United. I did my first five points ever <laughs> um, in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, it's how United are, isn't it? We don't bother with it first half and then we see what we're like at half time and we'll we'll try a bit. Um it could have been out of sight. It was literally again two halves. Um been five nil at half time, but yeah. Should have been. Yeah. Um and, and we couldn't have had any complaints, but uh, he's clinging on by his, his fingernails, isn't he, Ollie? I mean I say that, we're like four points off top of Premier League, it's ridiculous. Um but yeah. Uh second half we were good, but I don't <laughs> You can make a point that we we deserve to win because of how bad we were in the first half. It's it's difficult, but we did win. Um, How's the family holding up? Uh, they're all right in this difficult time. <laughs> no, no one argued over West Ham and uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, Luke. You also had Man United to win three one. Yeah, just what Josh said. I thought I only watched actually the first half. I turned it off because I thought <laughs> I mean we won all actually at half time, wasn't it? Did United no. score? No. I saw United score, then I turned it off, I think. Can't remember. Must have been started. Like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, at West Ham. I don't know what. If I were a West Ham fan, I'd be fuming, to be fair. Um, they missed so many really clear cut chances, open goals, and yeah. Just chat I just don't know what they were doing. They were fannying about so much with the ball when they could have just smashed it in. But um they were really impressive, to be fair, in that first period with bowling and other people, <laughs> I remember four nils. Um, I don't, I don't rate this Man United team, and I, I think so many cracks are being papered over. It's what yeah. I say. He just is, is like a cat with nine lives, but he's definitely used eight of them. He's used about nine hundred. Um, and I stand. It is weird his, though. <laughs> Pogger in that first half. Unreal, unbelievable. How, how can I I cannot fathom how this guy even played in the Premier League. It's, it's fucking useless. Yeah. Some United fan tell me otherwise. <clears throat> He's absolutely useless. 
Well, he's playing for a move now. I think he must have been. Um, to where? He'll get one, won't he? He'll be United. We'll get 50 million for him or something because he's fat twat of an agent started moaning and he wants to be paid, doesn't he? It'd be better immediately getting rid of him. Yeah. Um, but I always pick on Pog, but they, they were all bad, really. But he, he just stands out every time because he just doesn't look arsed. Mm. You can't be losing, getting absolutely trounced and just be dicking about in the centre circle doing step overs in front of nobody. <laughs> Is he still a good player? No, he rasped one in from 30 yard, didn't he? I didn't know. Did he score? Yes, he scored. Yeah. Great. Right. He's not scored two in two. He's scored against Leipzig as well. Weird. It is weird, like what you said, though, Josh. I mean, the four points off top at league, and everyone's like, "This Man United team shit." But is it just the Premier League that's a bit? It's a bit yeah, wide open at minute. Into it's away. like Liverpool aren't running away, City aren't running away. So I'm going to make a bold claim now. If we sacked Solskjaer today and got a competent manager in, we would have a chance of winning the league. Bold claim. <laughs> If you had uh, Philip Cocu, we'd win the league because Liverpool aren't the same. They've got the players there. They're basically told, go go out and have fun, lads. Go on, enjoy yourselves. Rather than being told to actually play a style, useless. Got run ragged by fucking Angelino the other day. What about Spurs, though? Yeah, they'll fall apart, won't they? Make sure you're checking out our tweet of Angelino (laughs) being in a world on his own. (laughs) There's something about Spurs this season. Well, Mar- Mourinho... Nah, they'll bottle it. I don't think they would. I think they would if they had Pochettino, because that's what he does. Yeah, I think Spurs will take one one that. injury to either Harry Kane or Son, and I think that's their season crumbled. I think they'll crumble anyway. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, because if United aren't going to win it, I wouldn't mind them winning it. But I think yeah. they've got a chance. Mm. Anyway. Right, let's get on to... Our new week's prediction. So for this weekend, it's got Rotherham versus Derby. Josh, what do you think? Is it Rotherham? Yeah. Hey, I'm sure you're playing Stoke. Oh God, I might be. Yeah. <laughs> I might have gone in in front. What week? What's going to be weekend? It's Derby Stoke. Oh, of course, yeah. Why have I put Rotherham? I don't know. Oh no, that's the that's the one for Mark Robertson. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, I've got him. So I'll do that again. Yeah, <laughs> just stay right. Fixtures for this weekend and then. Yeah. <clears throat> right, fixtures for this weekend, Josh. Derby versus Stoke. Um not They've turned a bit of a corner, not rather. Um <laughs> they have turned a bit of a corner. I'm gonna go Derby 1 0 and then Rooney getting the job. Oh I like that. Hmm. I'll give you an extra point if that comes true as well. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> One all. One all. You're not, you're not thinking Derby are on the upwards? I just think Stoke have had a pretty decent season. <clears throat> and um, you, you stop losing, but you, you're not scoring loads and you're not winning loads. Yeah. So I think I, I don't think a draw is a bad result in your position against Stoke. No. Yeah. I mean, we got a very good draw last night, actually, against Brentford. And yeah. we held our own. I think Brentford are a very good team, but we held our own. So yeah, I do agree with what you're saying, though, against Stoke. But I would like to see us start increasing our goals and 2 0 Derby Ooh. is what I'm going for. And Rooney to get sacked after. <laughs> <laughs> right, next game Luke, Man United versus Man City. Very big game. <laughs> Six pointer for the league title, this. Nil nil. It's another Man United versus Arsenal situation. I just don't. I don't. <clears throat> City are hit and miss themselves. United are miss and miss and hit. <laughs> what the hell that means? I just don't think. Uh, I don't think much of either team really. The same City that beat us five nil. <laughs> nil. Josh, um, I don't think it'll be nil nil. It could be fucking anything if we give him a head start. Um, fuck it, four three City. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> if, that, if that comes in, I'll give you another point. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to say 2-1 to Man City. I think they'll nick it. Luke, another big one for you, Arsenal versus Burnley. If we don't fucking beat Arsenal this season, I'll, I think it's time I killed myself. 
<laughs> Come on, let's edit that. No. <laughs> no. The amount of last minute winners or equalizers that shit housing team have had against us, the amount of penalties that were never penalties they've had against us. Let's have it right. Nobody likes Arsenal. No, they don't. Nobody. I don't even, even Arsenal fans don't like Arsenal. Panel. Even Arsenal that panel that they have, they don't like them. Nobody likes Arsenal. They did in 2003. We're past that. The shit house that team that they have nowadays. I'm 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 sad in a way that they dropped Gwen Doozy because he was like the the captain of the shit house. Everything about them condemned. Now it's just David Luiz, who's you know also disgusting as a human being. They're, they're an awful team. They're being shown up to be an awful team. They relied on Obama Yang. He's now got two goals in I think twelve games since he signed mm. his new contract. Yeah. Lacazette's always been shit. Mm-hmm. The strange manager. player is William, Williams, thirty-two on about two hundred and fifty grand a week. Cracking signing. Um, don't think he's done anything either. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I'd love to beat them. I think we'll draw. <laughs> <laughs> what a come down that way. What all? What all? Right, Josh. Um, <laughs> can you follow that? Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. And to add. They've got a manager who used to put cones out for Pep, so he thinks he's something special, and he's really not. Um, but I, I think Burnley will set up wrong. I think if they went and attacked him like Villa did, I think they'd win. But I think there's still this perception that Arsenal are half decent, um, so I think they might sit back. Um, I think Arsenal will nick it 2 1. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. I don't mind Arsenal. No. I'm Arsenal on FIFA at minute, so <laughs> oh, I've got party in centre mid. So uh... you'd do better than Arteta. Yeah, I've, I'm going to go for two nil because I, I think they are they're all right. They I do put them as like a top ten I, team. But... Aren't they about four points behind us? That's third bottom. Who oh, Arsenal? In front of you. Yeah, four points in front. Yeah, that's, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If that they're not all right, mate. They're shit. They're all right. Our better is also no. a shit. Just, yeah, right, so that is our weekend <laughs> fixtures. Next week we'll be joined by Mark Robertson. Another but well, no, our first Burnley player into Luke. So you're excited. Steve Guinan. Steve Guinan. Steve Guinan. He He's absolutely hated his time at Burnley. Absolutely first, permanent, <laughs> first permanent Burnley player. Yeah. First permanent Burnley player. But also another international player. Mm-hmm. Had a cap for Australia, so Make sure you stay tuned for that and we'll see you next week. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, all right, we it. <laughs>